Hi guys, this is Rod Singh, founding partner of the Spanovation Bridge and Seismic School, career coaching and education for great bridge engineers like yourself. Today I'm going to use the Sydney Harbour Bridge as an example to demonstrate how it relates to one of the four practices to boost your engineering skills. The practices of uh, sketch it, visualize it, think big picture and think construction. So as a part of this presentation, I've got a whiteboard video coming up and for that, I needed to prepare a sketch of the Sydney Harbour Bridge myself. So I used our practice of sketch to do that in freehand without the use of any instruments. I'm gonna play a video of that sketching at 20 times the speed. Uh, of course, the full length video with step-by-step -step instructions would be included um, as a part of our online course, uh, basic sketching skills for bridge engineers. Now here's the fast forwarded video of the freehand sketching of the elevation of the Sydney Harbor Bridge. The coolest thing for me about this landmark that defines the city of Sydney is its signature appeal. I think a big part of that is the shape of the arch at the ends. This is where the top chord does not follow the parabolic shape of the bottom chord and has a bit of a reverse curvature thing going on. Increasing the lever arm between the top and bottom chord significantly, almost three times compared to the mid span. Most other single span arch bridges with trussed ribs have the top and bottom chords parabolic and parallel to each other, such as the Beyond Bridge in New York. So was this done on the Sydney Harbour Bridge just to get the cool look? Or is this the case of form follows function? Let's do a quick poll here. Is the shape of the Sydney Harbour Bridge arch at the ends dictated by aesthetics or by structural requirements? Thanks for taking the poll. And it looks like the sketching of the elevation view is also complete. The Sydney Harbour Bridge has an impressive span of 503 meters. It uses 39,000 tons of steel, about 200 Boeing 747 aircrafts, the structural system is a thrust arch, whereby the compression is transferred from the bottom cord directly to the foundations. We know that single span flexural demands are zero at the ends. So why do you need the large lever arm between the top and the bottom cord? The answer lies in the way the bridge was constructed in progressive cantilevering from both ends. This meant that the arch experienced large flexural demands during erection at the supports. The top cord tension was anchored to the ground through temporary works. The Sydney Harbour Bridge is an excellent demonstration of the practice of think construction, where the erection methodology has an influence on the permanent design and configuration of the bridge. The large lever arm at the supports was required to resist the cantilever moments during erection. The Harbour Bridge, an integral part of the Sydney skyline, owes its shape to a structural reason, but only during construction. I guess in this case, you could say, form followed a temporary function. Thanks for watching this educational video from the Spanovation Bridge and Seismic School. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate if you're gonna hit like, um, post a comment or two, share this with your friends, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also you can go to our website and join the mailing list for various courses if you're interested. Thank you.